featuring D'Addario's proprietary NY steel wire and our impossibly thin protective coating, XS Electric lets you bend further and play longer with a sound that stays timeless. Hey everyone, this is Chris Keys for From Your Guitar. That was John Notto from Dirty Honey. John, how you doing? Good, man, how you doing? Real good. We have a special treat, we'll call it a Nashville exclusive. We'll get to that in a moment. But John, Les Paul guy, kind of there. We, you did a hook for us Yep. Uh, for Led Zeppelin. That's you're right, You're Led yeah. Zeppelin, and so clearly you're a Jimmy Page guy. You got the Marshalls, you got the... The whole thing, yeah, yeah, dude. yeah. yeah. So talk to me about uh, this particular Les Paul. Um, okay, so this is, uh, this is my number one. Uh, I've had it since uh, 2011. It's a 2003 58 reissue from the custom shop. And it's got a Murphy relic on it. Um, and it's also got some of my own relicking. <laughs> um, I tried a punk rocker belt for a little bit. <laughs> yep. And um, it's got a couple pickups in it that are from this company in Austin called Righteous Sound. Okay. And He's great down there. Do he, you know what the kind of their, their aim for in terms so, of these models? Yes, he calls these the RAF, which is like his righteous applied for. Okay. Righteousness applied for. Um, and it's a PF style, okay. PAF. It's a low output, which is, you know, I like that. I like to do the, I like the amps to do a lot of the work. Okay. So it's, um, and you know, this I did a large uh, amount of the LP, our second album with, and I did some of the EP with it. And you know, it's just been my guitar. I mean, this is the best guitar I own, personally. Yeah. And, and besides the pickups, is there anything else you've done to it besides the belt buckle rash? The belt buckle rash? Um, you know, not really. It it it's really just a fine piece of wood, and it, it it's uh, nothing else modded. I've never done the frets. Wow, that's <laughs> impressive. Yeah, um, probably should, but haven't. <laughs> <laughs> There's no bad notes yet, so and. Um, Actually, the tech on the Black Crows tour this past summer, he gave me a nice dressing. Um, so he kind of like redid them a little, crown, nice crowned them, I guess. Yeah, he hooked it up. So, so that's about as much as I've done to it. Yeah. And what do you dig about it? It just is it more, you know, I guess obviously tones the name of the game while we're here. But what, what, you know, you got three instruments here. We'll get to the special one in a yeah. minute. But what? Why is this one? So this one stuck out to me because it's warm, and. Uh, it's not pushing too hard. A lot of, uh, especially when I bought this, so this was like 2011, kind of like my first real guitar that's bitching, you know, yeah. and uh, not like my kid guitar, you know. Um, <laughs> a lot of what I didn't like about Les Pauls in the market was, even the custom shops, was they were bright and loud. And I wanted something that was more dynamic and I had more control over it. Mm. And I always just felt like if I'm pushing with the amp, you know, I can dampen. I, and I like to have things on the edge so that I can, I can control the feedback. But yeah. if the feedback's not there, you know, then, then uh, you don't have it. So a, a wider dynamic range is what I felt this guitar had. And it also just had more of a rock and roll sound than a metal sound. You know, um, wouldn't be that good in a really hard rock band, honestly. Like, hmm. you know, yeah. like uh, modern sounding. It wouldn't work. Um, but that's right where I like to live. So that's kind of what I really liked about it. And, um, does it fight you? Does it push you? Does it almost, uh, in a way, inspire you in, when you're playing yeah. it versus other yeah. instruments? Uh, when, yeah, when I first played it, it was like the first 25 minutes. I was actually, I was shopping for picks, believe it or not. <laughs> That's an expensive pick, my friend. <laughs> yeah, friends. it was just an expensive pick. I was, I was shopping for picks, and uh, there was like nobody waiting on me, so I just was like went into the custom shop part of the store and uh, played a bunch of Les Pauls, and I, this guy came in, and salesman and he was like over selly a little and then he was just like you don't want any of these i have one in the back for you he's like you got that bluesy rock style and he brought this out and i'll never forget i i plugged it in i played it and i was just like like literally 25 minutes later i was just i just went Whoo. and he was sitting right there and like he was a like dream <laughs> and i was like let me see what i can throw on it right now and i had a 59 reissue 
I had to scramble to sell it to afford this. Okay. I actually sold it to uh, Paul Stanley's Guitar Tech, strangely enough. <laughs> wow. He kind of, you know. Small world. Small world. L.A., you know. Yeah. It's like, you know, it was Craigslist, but you know, when he came to the house, it was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that's the story of getting it. It just stuck out to me as being more unique and uh, more, more of a, like a vintage rock and roll sound, which is what I love. Yeah, and it fits yeah. the dirty honey Fits vibe. the bill 100%, yeah. yeah. Well, before we move on to the other two friends, uh, what should we know about strings? So I'm using uh, D'Addario strings, and I'm using uh, the 52 to 10s. I like that heavy, you know, because it's just me on stage. I don't have anything else to fill it out. There's not another guitar player. So I, um, I like the heavy bottom. Okay. And then, but I still like to be able to throw the top around. Yeah, I was using 11s. I was doing 11s, and everyone on tour was like, you're crazy. Like, life doesn't have to be that hard. <laughs> 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 we tuned to E flat, so it was a little easier, but... Um, I switched, yeah, so it's nice. I will break a 10 after two gigs, so we do, you know, new strings every, every third gig or whatever, every, every other two. Yeah, because you hit hard. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, and sometimes the tequila hits hard and then I hit harder. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm there. Let's move on to the brown one okay, here. Okay, so, the yeah. The tobacco burst. Yeah, the tobacco burst, uh, courtesy of our friends at Gibson, um, actually has kind of taken... It's kind of, yeah, just, uh, earmuffs um, <laughs> yeah, good. has kind of taken first place in um, in the live touring for now because I I put some. Uh, is this like a 2019? So 2020? this yeah. Sorry, let me let me uh, start from the scratch. Yeah, this is a 2019 okay. standard 50s. Got it. And I got REF twos in it from Righteous Sound. Now these are basically that pickup, a little hotter, a little more spiked in like the one to three k kind of thing. All right. So. For you nerds out there. Um, <laughs> oh, they're out there. Oh, they're out there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's got a nice flame top for, it's not a custom shop guitar. Um, but it's got a really pretty top. And, you know, I love Tobacco Burst. And for a while it was my backup. But once I put these in here, I just found the right marriage. I kind of kept switching pickups around. I'm always tinkering, you know. Yeah. And um, so, you know, if you heard the first one, this one has a little bit more of a sting to it. So... <laughs> off camera John that you were saying like like that guitar yeah. how you bonded initially which yeah. I've continued to this day is that this one kind of inspires you and it gets you you to go for it yeah yeah it gets me so I'm realizing even that the, without the tequila even without the tequila yeah, <laughs> yeah so like this is like the studio audio file like when you get the expensive mics on it and you, you can crank the amps up you know you hear that this is a more complete I guess sound you know the custom shops always a high level yeah but this this with these pickups it really um it gives me that kind of zing that i need on stage yeah. that i need you know and out front you don't really hear the difference so it's really all about me so i'm just i don't know you know i've just been getting inspired by this one there's not much else to say about it it's just you know except that this is like you know the first example of what i believe to be you know the the the, the overhauling of Gibson, you yeah, know, the with the new ownership, the and this is the first testament to like, this isn't even custom shop level, and I, I'm literally playing it every night, so it's a great guitar. Now, you know? in terms of you only tune with these two guitars, the special yeah. one we'll get to, I keep alluding yep. to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, now you don't really change, like, oh, this no. song for this song, you just no. let it ride. I let it ride. Okay, so the, yep. this is now, again, earmuffs, a backup, and you'll use this as as long as you feel yeah, good yeah. about it. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I think that's the that's point where much we it. talk about this one, man. So let's get to this. The elephant. Voila. The elephant in the room. Um, courtesy of Cesar's private collection over at Gibson. Shout out Cesar. Um, he let me play this last year, actually, when we played. Down at the Ascent. Down at the Ascent. Gary and I were there. We opened for the Black Crows. I was, the whole thing was like, oh, I'll just play it for one tune. <laughs> he was like side stage and like three tunes in I was like I'm not putting it down <laughs> <laughs> but um so this is a real 1959 Gibson Les Paul it's got beautiful wearing you know there's a little bit of the cherry that didn't fade um it's just my style too you know kind of kind of like I could see you going home with this one yeah right yeah <laughs> I funny thing me too uh <laughs> 
I the, think there's some people who could see me not going home with this, though. <laughs> man, and, and I just came to light not too long ago is that it, it's really close to Peter Green's in terms of serial, serial yeah. numbers because uh, Kirk Hammond has that, and him and Kirk did a video, an article, and yeah. the, the guitars are really close. They are really close. So I've not heritage. seen Greeny in person, yeah, but um, they call this one Gemini. Oh, okay. And, um, yeah, I think they're like three or four serial numbers apart. It's really cool. Um, it's a really cool, it's just an amazing guitar. I, when I first played it, I was like, wow, it's like holding an electric eel. It's just yeah. like, yeah, you know. It's got a real, I think it's more akin to this one. Okay. Um, in terms of bite, but a little more sweeter. You know, that's a pretty harsh, relatively speaking, you know. Um, I want to shut up and I'm going to let you yeah, play it just so people it. can hear it. <laughs> Denigrate uh, Angus and the SG heritage that he brings to the table, but you guys did during soundtrack a shoot the thrill cover. Oh yeah, and, uh, that was a pretty good stand-in for an SG for Mr. Right, Young. yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> I think the thing that uh, really stands out about this guitar with its age is that, um, like the way that note fed back, but stayed sweet and desirable. Yeah, it's I re rarely ever heard that on a an instrument that isn't old. That's just something that, I don't know if it's the years of glue drying in a certain way, but it just, it's just got that extra sweetness. And, um, and also just dynamically, it's, it's a little more reactive, you know? You, you can literally be like. So you can just sting it and then it turn it, you know. You know, and then flip it over. It's just, a, yeah, it's, 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 what I, it's what you want in an instrument. I mean, it, 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 it's a holy grail. There's a reason. There's a reason it was a, f a few more dollars than these ones. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's, it's probably the, it's the best Les Paul I've ever played in my life, for sure. Well, no wonder you guys always have Nashville on your tour dates. You know, it always seems like you guys it's always now, play Nashville. It's pretty much related to this. I'm like, let's get Nashville on there. Well, man, um, so far we've heard, you know, these great guitars through these great amps. So let's hear a little bit more about these. Talk turkey, and yeah. And then uh, we'll, keep, we'll keep talking about the 59 as we, we go through we'll the pedals see. too. Sure. So this is a 2018 uh, 1987X, which is uh, a 50 watt plexi okay. on the street. And uh, as the kids say. As the kids say. Um, yeah. And this is the straight cab. This has green backs in it, 25 watts each, four by 12. Um, and and that, this is always on. That's what you're hearing most of the show. Okay. And all these pedals go through that. Okay. So then what we have over here is an actual, from the year 1987, Silver Jubilee. Real uh, deal. Real deal. Got it from Emerald City Guitars up in Seattle. Shout out, they, they, they were really nice to me. So, um, and then I got it going through a same cab, 25 watt greenbacks. Which is a little unique. I, that wouldn't be what this was really designed for, mm -hmm. but it's kind of my own spin, and I, you know, don't have another cab. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and what I do is this is essentially my overdrive pedal. I just, so that's always on, and when the solos come on, I hit this A B Y switch, and I, I just add that. Can you add to a little backstory to how that became a thing that you did? Absolutely, yeah. So you, you um, told us, so share yeah. with the world. So I was, um, 
I've been slowly phasing. I've been slowly phasing overdrive pedals out of my life. You know, it's been a little slow quit. Uh, the last one I was using, which is still awesome, um, was a TSR Solo Dallas, like kind of like Schaefer oh, yeah. thing. That thing's awesome. And if we had to play any situation, probably when we go to Europe, I'll have, we'll only be at one amp maybe. So I'll use that because it, it Cause just- That's way more expensive than a tube screamer. <laughs> it's way more expensive than a tube screamer, yeah. Um, so, we were on tour with the Black Crows, and I was like, man, like, um, the guitar player, his, his tone is like, just jumps out as super bitching, like, for the solos. Yeah. And I was, like, looking at his board, and I was like, oh, is it this overdrive pedal or that one? And he had some, and he's like, oh, no, no, I just, he had, like, two, uh, was it, magnetone yeah. stacks? And, and then he had an orange in the middle. And he was like, yeah, I just turn on, the, I just add the orange stack. And I was like, Phew. I was just like, for the solos. Just for the solos. That's yeah. rich. Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, um, no, it's, a, it's a, the lead guitar player, Isaiah oh, Mitchell. Yeah, from yeah. Uh, Earthless. Yeah. So I was like, oh, whoa, that's the fucking move, dude. You're just adding another half stack? But he had like the mini ones. And I was like, as soon as I can do that, I'm fucking doing that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Can I swear? I just did. Yeah, but, you uh, did. Um, but yeah, so I, I got the idea from Isaiah Mitchell, and uh, I just thought that would be the best. And kind of Slash, I guess, always did that. I don't think he really uses overdrive pedals. Um, so, the, and the inspiration from this particular model was Slash. Yeah. And Rich uses it too, and Rich always used it back in the day. Um, so, and it's quite versatile. It's. It's a bit yeah, I mean, because like you think about it, you got Rich, you got Slash, and then even at points in his career on tour, uh, Bonamassa used one. I mean, yeah. We, doing a, we did an interview with him, and he had a Jubilee at one point. So So I could give you an example of what it's like. So this is like, yeah. this is the, just, you know, the riff tone all night, you know. <laughs> you know, and then by itself, this Jubilee. So it's a lot smaller. But and they're both 50 watts. But they're both is, 50 watts. Yeah. Very, and it's much more compressed. You know, you can hear like the, you know. It's just that sound, right? But what I do is I add it for the solo. So you just have it, the way they pair, it just really pops. It's just like. And I add it. You know, so. I know that you guys are in ears, but you can definitely feel it. it yeah, yeah. Get behind the other amp. And that's the other attraction I've always had to multiple amps is even, not necessarily even louder, but louder. <laughs> uh, but, um,. That size feels great, especially yeah. with only a trio, which is essentially what we are, yeah. you know, minus vocals. So that size feels really good. Well, let's continue on, John, yeah. and get into the pedals. All right, so what we got here is um, really the sort of the hallmark of what I consider my tone to be is the, uh, this polytune. Polytune, yeah. Yep. Big secret. I thought, yeah. You don't want to have it on a lot, though. Um, Tone suck. It's a terrible joke. Tone suck. It, tone <laughs> suck. it really sucks, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. So we have the polytune here, which is what I go into, and then I go right into this ABY switch. And that's how you're switching the amps. Yep. So right off the bat, it's going the the B is going to the Jubilee, and the Jubilee gets none of the pedals. Got it. Then I go into this uh, Crybaby 535Q Mini Wah. It's which little itty -bitty. it's mostly for pedal board size is why I got the little one. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's cool. It has the I got this one because it steps on immediately. Yeah, it's a touch sensor. Yeah. I was screwing it up so often with the click. I did. I I just wouldn't know when it was on or wasn't. So. Do you um, miss having the fixed position of it? Because sometimes with the wall, like you know, like you'll. I kind of do miss the, Yeah, I kind of miss the size of because it's actually a shorter. Oh, the throw. Throw, and so you kind of, you can be yeah. more subtle with it. And that's actually better, I'm realizing. But, you know, well, shout, out to, doing? shout out to um, Brian Kehoe. Really hooked it up for me. Um, best beard in the game. Mid-tour. Best beard in the game. Um, 
And then I also got this MXR. So then I go to this MXR Univibe. I've had this for a while. I use this on um, down the road. Let's hear it quick. Yeah, how sure. you have it set up. So I, I'll like for this one, that'll be like uh, in the verses. It'll just be like a kind of a Hendrix sound. Um, I love when it's chewy like it's that. It's so chewy, yeah. So it's just like a verse sound. And then sometimes, we actually have a song we didn't release. We've played a few times live that I feature this pedal. Then we go into the Pog. I have it set so the octave up's kind of not really in the picture, okay. which is kind of the signature of the Pog, but I just use it for, we use it for uh, the Prince song um, that we released for the NHL. Uh, we do Let's Go Crazy. We did that. Uh, NHL, Smashville. Yeah. Come on. NHL, yep. So I used it for that. What's cool about the two amp thing is that I can turn the second one on and play chords, which you normally can't do with a pod because it gets weird. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, and then I got this Echoplex, uh, also from Dunlop. Because um, you used to have an L cap. You used to have an L cap, and then. But that's I, much smaller. Much smaller. That was pretty much the deal. You know, I just kind of have it set to. Mostly I use that for like some of my, we do a solo like, and it's just me by myself. So turn that on and off. That came with this tap time delay, which is essential. Um, and then we get this uh, MXR reverb. I kind of like that really over the top effect on it. Mm -hmm. um, again, mostly use that in the solo. Um, sometimes I use it in uh, actually to fire away. There's kind of like this pre-chorus that I get real dreamy with the whole thing. So I'll turn it on like this. set up and structured it almost sounds like two delays yeah because it's a bit more space right than like a slab and then i have um shout out to johnny at exotic who hooked this up um this sp compressor and that really gets the least amount of use <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh it has a very good purpose which is um say like the end of let's go crazy where i do that classic prince solo um i like to have this just like it just it helps with sustain. Mm. Um, so you know, I actually have, can't be that close. But... You know, just just that extra. Um, yeah, or yeah, and then I'll, I'll have that on and, and kind of do the, the slash, you know. And really, it, it does that thing where it, it, it's like a, a beast I'm taming, you know. Boston Broncos with that thing. You yeah, know? man. <laughs> I just realized I'm going to do that a lot tonight. <laughs> and that part of that, it's a little extra special, again, with this 59, that kind of beast that you, you have to tame. I've always liked that ever since I, I was a kid. I just gravitated towards the more the guitar. Like, I first got a hollow body. Not a full hollow body, but like a, a Howard Roberts Fusion. Okay. Because it would feed back more. And so I would get it right with like a twin and like a, um, uh, a tube screamer and, and mess with that. And you, I really liked how you could 
you have this feedback at your fingertips. I just kind of like it when chaos is always, you know, a, a note away. <laughs> <laughs> That's just my favorite thing about, you know, loud rock guitar. It's like that element. Well, you're keeping it alive, man. Yeah. And we appreciate your time and we appreciate your art. Oh, yeah. This is fun. Yeah. John, thank you so much. Thank you. If you could do us a favor, man, actually take us out on that 59 because we don't get to see one very often. Yeah, of course. <laughs>